All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Ayan, nadagdagan na tayo. So, um, today we're, uh, we're to discuss module number five. But before that, let's just do some housekeeping matters first. Um, I think this would be the last module or the last two topics for uh, the for the first unit. So that means we'll need to have the for, or we're ready actually to do the first problem set according to our schedule. Uh, uh, and don't talaga sa week na to yung problem set. All right. Though dapat supposedly yung problem set is after pa ng extra 2.2, but we're uh, we're one week behind schedule so. Uh, supposedly, kung susundin ka yung schedule, yung chronological order, we're gonna have sex, uh, Lab Xer 2.2 this week, or basically a submission a Monday next week, and then the problem set will be week after that. But unfortunately, that will fall under the reading break na. Tama ka ba? Parang reading break na. Bilis ng panahon, no? And then after naman ng reading break ay uh, Holy Week naman. So, parang uh, gipit kung i- Susunding in chronological order. So what I'm thinking is that we'll push through with the schedule of the problem set, um, which is for this week. All right. If you begin the problem set this week, uh, probably late on Friday, and then the submission will be on Thursday uh, next week. Uh, so that um, pagdating natin ng reading break, wala na kayong masyadong problemahin. Tapos sa Holy Monday, We'll come back to the lab sessions and do lab XR 2.2. But that, as you will see later, I'm uh, relax relaxed yung XR 2.2 kasi binawasan ko na yung methods na kailangan natin pag usapan All right. So I think that's that's my plan. So I don't need to uh, to ask for your approval for this kasi ito naman yung nasa schedule talaga natin. So for information lang. Pero kung nilipat ko yung date, I will ask for your permission. Pero dahil technically, Etong week talaga yung problem set number one. I'll just be pushing ahead with a schedule. All right. So is that okay or gusto niyo mga negotiate? Uh, basically, I'm thinking of problem set uh, one to have uh, three questions. <laughs> Una kung inisa pa apat na tanong, but I think that will be too much. And anyway, we have done a very extensive and comprehensive uh, set of laboratory exercises. So wala na akong maibibigay na bago or kung magbibigay ako ng question na nagawa niyo na sa lab exer wala na kayong matututunan ng bago so sayang lang so what i'm thinking is to give you some uh, just three problems all right the first problem would be uh, just your usual essay type question so siguro lima either lima or sampung questions that will i that uh, that will ask you to elaborate or to laymanize some of the things that we did uh, in the unit all right uh, kabisado nyo na naman yung style ko sa essay type. So, yun yung gagawin natin sa number one. Number two will be a little bit of a more objective type question. So, meron mga offshoots kasi yung mga methods natin ginawa. Kasi so far, ang pinagawa ko sa inyo sa lab exercises ay direct implementation lang ng mga methods. Pero may mga ibang topics na implicitly nandun sa methods na diniscuss Pero hindi ko pa kayo natitest kung kaya nyong i-manipulate yung mga equations na nandun. Alright? Kasi straightforward. Binigay ko yung formula. Binigay ko yung formulas na involved sa method. Tapos kinode nyo siya. So it's kind of mechanical. Uh, at least from my perspective. So I wanna, I want you, I want to test you if you can play around this equation. So limbawa, meron kang equation na uh, say y equals f of x. So can you manipulate it? Uh, kunwari, ang kailangan ko ay value ni y. So, kaya nyo ba yung gawin? Or halimbawa, sa bisection method, binigay ko yung method, binigay ko yung error bounds, binigay ko kung, uh, kung ilang um, uh, kung paano nababawasan yung intervals uh, at very at every step of the way, right? nababawasan yung haba ng interval. So, probably I'll ask you how many iterations is needed so that I, I will get an error or I will get an estimate that is within this epsilon value from the actual value. All right. So yung mga ganun tanong, yung hindi straightforward na kailangan yung i-manipulate yung mga equations o mga formulas na binigay ko sa module. And I think you can do that because anyway, you are math majors. Uh, you know how to think critically and outside the box. So siguro test ko lang kayo. Siguro four or five questions uh, worth 10 points uh, in total. Tapos objective siya. I'm thinking of uh, putting it in Canvas para automatic din yung feedback. So baka maging all or nothing siya. 
All right, so do your calculations beforehand before you submit your answers online. All right, so padding true or false siya, padding multiple choice, or padding you will input your answer. Or iron yun ng all or nothing. <laughs> uh, I don't know, some of you might be my 155 students. Parang ang unti nung nagpapasa dun sa true or false, ano? So, um, I don't know, parang kakaiba, ano? So, parang mas tricky pag mga ganun. Mas madali yung may partial credits kang pwede makuha. But that's what I'm thinking. And then the third is, uh, I will ask you to implement a method. So parang lab exer, pero gusto ko lang ipagawa sa inyo yung isang method yata na, isa na nga lang ba yan? Parang isa na lang na method yung hindi natin nagagawa sa lab exer. So kindly rummage through the lab exercises, tingnan nyo, ano pa nga ba yung hindi napapagawa ni sir? Ang dami nating algorithms na diniscuss, pero may at least isang method na hindi ko pa napapagawa sa lab exer. And that's what I'm that I'll uh, and that's what I'll ask you to do in the problem set. Para pantay-pantay lahat ng algo na implement nyo, nakapagsulat kayo ng code para doon, so para magamit nyo siya uh, later in your research or later in the course. Okay? So that's it. Ano pa nga ba? Oh, for uh, D2L pips, uh, sorry, natatagalan akong checkan yung laboratory exercise 2.1. Uh, I hope to finish it by kanina. Kaya lang, ano nga ba nangyari? Tatatlo yung natapos ko, nasimulan ko yung isa. I don't know, uh, hindi ko siya macheka ng mabilis, so uh, apologies. But what I'll do is to, uh, to upload the answer key probably on Friday. Okay? Uh, kasabay na rin nung, uh, nung problem set. Para if you want to review it vis-a-vis uh, -vis the problem set, so makikita niyo yung solutions ko doon sa LabExer 2.1. All right, so para hindi niyo na kailang antayen yung feedback from us. Okay. Uh, so I think that's it. Uh, and then module five is already up on Canvas. Sana hindi ko nakalimutan i publish yung module. I hope you can access it. Pero ano pa lang to kalahate. I'll start writing the other half of module number five later today. Okay. And then, yeah, instead of the meme, uh, ito na lang yun nilagay ko rito. Um, I, 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 uh, ano ba to? Um, I attempted to, to, uh, to disconnect myself from the news. All right. Kasi alam niyo naman, napaka stressful ng news. When I was in the US, hindi na ako nagbabasa ng balita sa Pilipinas. All right. Ang sinusubay bayang ko na lang, nung umpisa, ay yung politics, um, politics sa US. Uh, I'm a politics, uh, a fan or her isa kong aficionado ng politics no so nag-focus ako sa US kaya lang na stress na rin ako you know uh buong nan actually almost all the time that I was there si Trump yung presidente so ganun magulo rin yung politika nila and it's stressful to see how people reason with each other and ngayon parang ang hirap mag-disconnect especially I'm still using Facebook I do I am on IG minsan nagte-Twitter din you, I can't fail to uh, or yeah, I can't avoid uh, seeing this uh, politics stuff. I don't care who people support. Pero kasi yung nakaka-trigger yung mga, yung reasoning ba? Pag nakita mo yung comments, forget about the candidates' names. Pero parang yung mga supporters ay nagiging uh, blind fanatics na. All right? So there are some instances uh, wherein people believe uh, a random picture that anybody could have uh, taken a picture of somebody's flyer together with money and they claim na bayad bayad yung mga yung or binayaran sila to attend whatever campaign while parang ang haba ng diskusyon nakikipag reason ka as if valid yung foundation or valid yung evidence nila meanwhile you have these videos they are doing this in plain uh, eyesight in uh, plain um, daylight and it's as if they can get away from it or they can get away with doing whatever they want. Okay. Now, uh, I don't hate politicians too much. Hindi ko, parang yung sisi, hindi ko sa kanila masyadong binubunton at the back of my mind. Pero what I am, what I am, uh, uh, what I, uh, yung mga sinisisi ko talaga, yung mga tao. Because tama si uh, Joseph uh, De Maestre. Hindi ko ma-pronounce ng tama in French yung apelido niya. So, de maestri na lang. He said that every nation gets the government it deserves. I first heard this uh, this quote or a version of it dun sa paborito kong, uh, isa sa mga paborito kong TV series, 24, ni Kiefer Sutherland. I don't know kung naabot niyo pa yun. Alright. Uh, isa isang speech dun, uh, na kuha, sabi, sabi nung president nila ron, uh, in every democracy, the people get the government it deserves. 
And I always put this as my status in Facebook every time there's an election in the Philippines. All right. Now, and I think if if we still believe these politicians, these traditional people, we really deserve to get them as our leaders. As bad as it sounds, pero kung majority pa rin ng mga Pilipino ay ganun mag then we deserve to get shitty leaders. Uh, pardon the word, pero wala may isip na ibang word na magamit. Pero anyway, yeah. So um, I just hope the next generations will be better because para nawawala na ako ng pag-asa sa generation na to. But hopefully um, we'll get there, okay? Okay, so um, enough of uh, those stuff. All right, moving on. So here's the updated uh, schedule for the course. So problem set number one, as I've said, I'll give it on Friday, uh, March 25, uh, probably later in the day or later in the night, okay? Uh, kaya ako gagawin three questions na lang yon. The reason why I'll give you on Friday is not for you to start doing it on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Ang request ko lang ay basahin niyo yung questions on Friday, okay? Try to go through uh, the questions and then, uh, sabi ko na naman to yata sa inyo na maganda kasi na alam niyo na yung question. Number one, you can plan in advance kung, kung ilang oras yung kailangan yung gawin or uh, i-google para dun sa problem set vis-a-vis -vis the other uh, requirements that you need to do throughout the week. Okay. And number two, it's it's to jumpstart your subconscious to start working on the problem. So para at least, um, I don't know, that's my feeling. Subconsciously, we're doing math. Okay. So pag alam mo na yung problem, alam na ng subconscious mo kung ano yung kailangan mga concepts na i-recall. Uh, I believe nag-start na siyang mag-solve, hindi lang tayo aware. So para pag umupo na kayo on Monday, to start doing problem set number one, then uh, there's something to start with, okay? Now, we won't have any lab uh, session on Monday, though I can open the lab session. Uh, kung may mga questions kayo or clarifications, I, I, I can hang out with you guys on Monday, pero hindi required. Uh, wala kasing lab exer on Monday, okay? But what he'll do is problem set number one. And then the deadline is March 31, so 28, 29, 30, 31. So you'll have four working days next week. So meron kayo Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday, 11.59 yung submission. So if I have three items or three big problems, so target to answer at least one big problem uh, per day. Okay? May mga sub-questions kasi naman yan. Tatlo nga lang sila pero may sub-questions. Right? And then, uh, yeah, yun yung goal nyo. Uh, isang uh, numbered item per day. And then, I will appreciate it if you can submit uh, your work for one numbered item as soon as you finish it or as soon as you are sure with your answer. Okay, so just uh, upload it in Canvas. I don't care if you will work in groups. So actually, I often encourage working in groups. Just make sure that what you write in, the, in your problem set is something that you understood, okay? Wag lang basta kumopia or wag lang basta makinig kay classmate. Challenge what your classmate is um, is proposing. So, kung may solution siyang propose, try to critique it to make it better. Okay? So, ganun naman tayo natututo, right? So, I don't, uh, I won't bar you from uh, from consulting others, working with others, or uh, consulting any other material. That's fine. Uh, my only request is that you only put in writing whatever you understood. Okay? So, that's going to be on March 31. And as I've mentioned, on Holy Monday, we'll go back to the lab sessions para gawin yung lab exer 2.2. Okay. And the coverage of Lab Extra 2.2 would be the contents of module number five. All right. So any questions with that timeline? I hope that's okay. All right. And then we'll just, sorry. <coughs> and then I'll see if we can uh, if we can forego meeting on Holy Week para magkaroon naman kayo ng bakasyon. So pwedeng Holy Monday and then we can... Uh, we can wave uh, Holy Wednesday away and pwede na kayo magbakasyon, magbeach na kayo kung gusto nyo. All right. So let's try to do that. I'll make the final decision next week. All right. Para maplano nyo kung magbabakasyon kayo ng engrande. So para makapagbuk kayo ng tickets. So just remind me on, uh, just remind me next week to give you the final uh, say on Holy Wednesday. Okay. Now, so what, what does the module contain? So ito yung pag natin under module number five. So first, we will uh, we'll try to understand Eitken's method, which is basically an acceleration method. 
Okay, so ito ay isang method na niraran natin sa ibabaw ng isang existing algorithm to speed up the convergence, right? And then the second half of the module is to talk about ill-behaved root-finding problems. And these are when uh, any improvement or numerical methods will not work optimally for this kind of problems, and there's nothing we can uh, there's nothing we can do for these problems. So, ang pwede lang nating magawa kung ill behave yung problem is just to be a little wary about it and be more skeptical about the results that we get from our algorithm. Kasi nga, yung ill behave, description siya para dun sa problem. And as numerical scientists or mathematicians, we cannot do anything about it unless we can tweak the problem a little bit to get away or to get rid of the instabilities or the ill conditioning of the problem. Okay? And almost always, we cannot do anything about that. So, hindi natin siya kayang i-address dun sa mga methods or hindi natin kayang i-modify yung mga methods to give way for ill-behave problems. Uh, there are some na pwede natin bawasan yung pagiging ill-behave, but yun nga. Uh, the only thing that, uh, or the most important thing here is to be wary about the result. Uh, maging skeptical tayo sa mga results kapag ka napansin natin na yung problem ay ill-behaved. All right? So, and then what we can do is um, not change the problem, but to double check all our results. Kasi nga baka may mga anomalies na mangyari. Ron. So basically, these two things are not new to you because these are big themes in numerical analysis. Number one, yung una, uh, speeding up uh, methods. Nakita na natin to sa 174 when we look at Richardson extrapolation that uh, sped up the, conver uh, the convergence of uh, our derivative formulas or our numerical differentiation schemes, right? And then, dun sa ill-behaved problems, nakakita na nga ba tayo nito? Well, I hope in uh, AMAT 152, you talk about uh, ill-conditioning ng mga problem. Uh, Ill, yeah, ill-conditioning ng mga problems. So, actually, we we already seen a little bit about it when we talk about um, anomalies in numerical integration. We have seen that in some problems, um, they they are phrased in such a way that uh, our numerical integration techniques will not work optimally. Probably there would be a loss of uh, loss of accuracy or loss of speed. Di natin na attain yung theoretical rate of convergence, all right? So ang solution lang natin doon ay to manipulate the problem a little bit. And we can do that kasi nga nagkataon na merong equivalent formulation yung mga integrals. So just take a uh, simple U substitution okay lang yon or hatiin yung integral into several pieces so that's a nice way of going around the instability pero kung i plug in mo yung actual ill conditioned statement ng problem sa isang method wala tayong magagawang improvement dun sa method so ang ina-address talaga natin sa mga ill behaved problems ay yung statement talaga ng problem before we even attempt to apply numerical schemes for it okay and then uh, on april 11th I will ask you to implement Eitken's method to solve scientific problems. So basically here you will need your uh, your root finding algorithms from from previous exercises. Imo modify niyo siya ng konti para makuha uh, para may apply yung Eitken's method. Okay? So I think that would just uh, that will be the coverage of uh, XR 2.2 which is a little bit uh, shorter probably than uh, Lab XR 2.1. So I think kaya mukhang okay natin siyang gawing penitensya sa Holy Week. So we can do that for the Holy Week. Okay, so let's uh, go down to business and talk about Eitken's methods. All right? So remember, we, we talked about several root twining techniques, and most of them are very simple, right? They're grounded on very simplistic um, um, applications of or instantiations of mathematical concepts. For instance, a bisection method. Hinati hati lang natin in a nice way yung interval. Pinapalit ng pinapalit natin yung interval hanggang super liit na siya. Na pero sure pa rin tayo na laman niya yung hinahanap natin na root, right? Also the regular falsi method wherein we took advantage of the fact that if you zoom in up in a uh, um, if you zoom in off in a curve, para nagiging straight lang straight line lamang siya. So the shorter the window, uh, kung saan natin ginagraf yung function, nagmumukang uh, straight line lamang yung isang curve. And so uh, a, a straight line would be a good approximate to that curve. 
So, ang kinukuha nating approximate sa regular false method ay yung x-intercept nung, uh, nung line na nag-approximate dun sa curve. Okay? So, these are very, uh, very uh, intuitive, uh, I would like to say intuitive methods na napaka-obvious ng application ng simple mathematical process. But, you know, if you have a simple method, we don't expect it to be very, very fast, all right? Or that it will attain a very fast convergence. Kasi kung matatandaan nyo, by section method, uh, siya ay super linear yung convergence, regular falsi, linear lang yung convergence uh, in general or in most cases. But uh, when you employ the Illinois algorithm, or the uh, Anderson-Bjork algorithm, nagiging 1.442 yung kanya convergence, all right? So, and then you also have what? Um, the secant method, which has the golden ratio as its uh, rate of convergence. So, nakikita nyo na hindi lumalampas ng quadratic yung mga simpleng mga methods na na-discuss natin, right? Actually, isa lamang yung naging quadratic, uh, quadratically convergent method na na-discuss natin, which is newton Rapson. Which is a little bit complicated kasi kinailangan yung konsepto ng calculus. Kung hindi na invento ni Newton yung calculus, hindi natin matututunan yung uh, newton Rapson method. Okay? So yun, kung simple yung isang method, so we expect it to be very slow. Right? And that's where Aiken's method will come in, uh, will come in handy. All right? So it was actually a method that was uh, uh, first devised or um, actually... Uh, hindi ito original ni Alexander Aitken, though siya, sa kanya usually ina-attribute yung method. He formalized it in 1926, but I think there was a simpler version of this algorithm as early, I think, as the 17th century. But it was Alexander Aitken who uh, further developed that 17th century method and uh, put it in, in its modern form. So para saan si Aitken's method? Isa siyang paraan para mapabilis yung convergence ng mga linearly convergent uh, methods. Okay? So ano ba yung mga nakita na natin na linearly convergent method? Well, number one, yung regular falsi method in general. Yung classical, I mean, yung classical regular falsi method. Though hindi natin pinroof, pero in most cases, the regular falsi method will converge linearly. Uh, kaya nga na-invento yung Illinois algorithm at saka Anderson-Bjork to further uh, to uh, to speed up the convergence but generally um regular falsi has a linear convergence okay tapos yung isa pa ay fixed point iterations all right we have seen that fixed point iterations converge uh, also linearly all right so kung magko-converge man yung fixed point iteration all right but i think we have uh, proved uh, we have seen that in the contraction mapping theorem that indeed the uh, linear yung convergence ng uh, ng uh, ng ano nga yun? <laughs> ng fixed point iterations. Remember, you have the limit of x uh, r minus uh, x sub n plus 1 all over r minus x to the n, all inside absolute values as n approaches infinity, eto ay equals sa f prime of r. Okay. So, yan yung natutunan natin mula sa mula sa Contraction mapping theorem. And look, uh, remember that the rate of convergence is the exponent that comes with the denominator uh, so that the right-hand side will be a constant. So by the contraction mapping theorem, we know that we will get a constant limit if the denominator will be equipped with an exponent equal to 1. Right? Kaya natin nasabi na yung mga convergent fixed point iterations, linear yung convergence. Now, these iterations, the regular falsi and the fixed point iterations are very simple. All right. So, and they are not very expensive to perform. All right. So, computationally, cheap lang itong mga methods na to. Pero yun nga, nagsasuffer sila sa mabagal na convergence. So, we can borrow and apply Aiken's method into this, on top of these algorithms para mapabilis yung kanilang convergence. Okay. Now, what is required to, uh, to do Aiken's iteration? Well, basically, mag-work ito sa kahit anong linearly convergent sequence. But the kicker is we should have an estimate for the asymptotic error constant. Remember, if you have this uh, limit statement here that proves the linear convergence of your sequence, sorry, etong f prime of r, yung, yung constant dun sa kanan, nung limit equation, ito yung tinatawag natin na asymptotic 
error constant, right? So we denote uh, the asymptotic error constant in general by the Greek letter lambda, okay? So para ma-apply si Aitken, dapat alam natin or may estimate tayo para sa asymptotic error constant lambda, okay? So forget about this to be uh, from the uh, newton raphson uh, from the fixed point iteration. So in general, kung equal yan kay lambda, which is greater than zero, okay? So ito yung nasasabi natin na linear convergence. Now take away the limit, and sabihin na lang natin for sufficiently large n. Kasi nga, di ba, sa sequences, ang concern lang natin ay kapag ka malaki na yung subscript. So in the long run, or as n increases, this guy will become an approximation, right? Translate ko lang yung limit statement into an approximation statement. And then we can multiply both sides by this guy, pero nag-adjust pala ako ng indices. I'll get essentially equation 5.1. So we have the uh, the error on the nth step or the in the nth iteration to be approximately equal to the asymptotic error constant times uh, the previous error. Okay, so itong equation ito 5.1, uh, nanggaling lang siya dun sa definition ng asymptotic error constant at sa kanyang rate of convergence. Okay, and then we can solve for R. Uh, and then write it in a more computationally uh, uh, apt form. So simple algebra will give us equation four point uh, equation five point two. Okay. So this tells us that uh, the uh, estimate r in the long run, or actually not the estimate, the actual root r in the long run will be approximately equal to x sub n plus the ratio lambda over one minus lambda times the the step from the previous iteration or the, the change in your iterate, okay? So yun pala, kung sure ka na na sufficiently large na si n, mas magandang approximation para kay r eto. So remember, you can run your regular uh, linearly uh, convergent sequence, makakakuha ka ng mga x sub n's, all right? Tapos ang sinasabi nitong analysis natin with the asymptotic error constant is, if you have an idea, of what the asymptotic error constant is, we can get a better approximate for the root by using two previous values. Actually, by using two values in the iteration, x sub n and x sub n minus one. So this is what we call, uh, what we can refer to as an extrapolation process. So we're getting another approximate for R that is basically an extrapolation using the estimates x sub n and x sub n minus 1. So para talaga siyang version ng Richardson extrapolation na ginawa natin. Iraran ko yung usual algorithm, makakuha ko ng mga x sub n's, but I can take advantage of a knowledge of the asymptotic error constant para gamitin yung dalawang terms dun sa aking sequence of estimates para makakuha ng isang mas magandang estimate para dun sa root. And that's equation 5.2 is telling us. Now, the only problem with implementing equation 5.2 is it is based on the assumption that we know what lambda is. All right. So, may mga methods ng hirap hanapan ng lambda or hanapan yung formula para kay lambda. Usually, we don't know what lambda is because remember, the formula for finding lambda is taking the ratio of absolute errors. Pero hindi natin kayang compute yung absolute errors exactly because in practice, we don't know R, alright? Kasi kung alam mo si R, bakit ka pa nag-run ng, ng root finding method, right? So, kaya uh, usually imposible ang mahanap natin si R ng exacto using the definition of the asymptotic error constant. Now, with that, kailangan natin mag-take advantage ng further analysis that was done for the asymptotic error estimates or the asymptotic error constants para dun sa mga linearly convergent sequences. Okay. Now, I don't know what happened, but I did not discuss this error estimate or this um, asymptotic error estimate for the regular falsi method. So, uh, siguro in the next iteration of the course, probably I'll insert uh, one paragraph sa regular falsi that will give you this estimate. Okay. But for now, just believe me that equation 5.3 is true, all right? So sa classical regular falsi method, okay? Kasi ang goal ko ngayon, i-apply yung 8 can 
dun sa mga linearly in the, uh, mga linearly convergent sequences na na-consider na natin. Una, yung regular falsi. So, kailangan ko ng knowledge ng lambda. Okay. So, but fortunately, I found another reference that told me na yung asymptotic error constant para sa regular falsi method, or in particular, the classical regular falsi method, is approximately equal to this ratio. Okay. So, remember, ang actual lambda ay approximately equal sa r minus x sub n over r minus x sub n minus 1. All right? But uh, an analysis of the regular falsi method can tell us that lambda is approximately this guy. And this one is more friendly for us because hindi natin kailangan yung actual value ni r. Kunin mo lang yung nakuha mo sa nth iteration, nakuha mo mula sa n minus 1 to iteration, saka sa n minus 2 to iteration, makukuha mo tong ratio na to. And it was proven, I think it was in Brady's book, um, Friendly Introduction in Numerical Analysis, uh, na prove niya na ito ay good estimate para sa lambda. Okay? Now, if this is a good approximate for lambda, but the thing is, this guy is dependent on the value of n, all right? Kung nasa ang iteration ka na, uh, instead of calling this as my estimate for lambda, I'm going to call it lambda sub n. So essentially, instead of a single estimate for the asymptotic error constant, all right, makakabuo tayo ng sequence of estimates for the asymptotic error. Okay? So computein nyo lang to, makukuha nyo yung mga lambda n's. And then we can take advantage of that later when I will put this information into equation 5.2. Gagawin ko lang itong lambda n, lambda n. Tapos gagamitin ko yung x sub n at saka x sub n minus 1 to speed up the convergence. All right? So tandaan nyo lang yan. Yan yung pag-regular falsi method, yung apply nyo ng 8 kens, ganito nyo ko computein yung lambda sub n. All right? Now, yung isa pang klase ng uh, linearly convergent sequence or method na na-discuss natin ay yung mga fixed point iterations. So according to the contraction mapping theorem, if your fixed point iteration will converge, then it will converge linearly with asymptotic error constant equal to the value of the derivative at the root r. Or actually, not the root r, sorry, the fixed point r. So yung asymptotic error constant sa fixed point iteration sa equal kay f prime of r. Okay. But again, this is not uh, useful for us because to get the exact value of lambda para sa fixed point iterations, kailangan kong i-plug in yung fixed point para uh, sa loob ni f prime. But again, we're solving for r or the fixed point r. So wala tayong prior information about r. So but luckily, it can be shown or actually we will revisit. How was it shown that this lambda sub n's will produce a sequence that are good as uh, that is that will contain elements or terms that are good estimates to lambda okay bakit ito ay approximately equal kay f prime of r which is which incidentally coincides with the formula for lambda sa regular falsi method okay pero makikita niyo yung regular falsi method in the beginning at kagad yung estimate para kay lambda pero kay uh, kay kay fixed point iterations Ito yung nakuha natin sa contraction mapping theorem. Now, I'll try to convince you that this sequence, the sequence of lambda sub n's, will be a good estimate for lambda or will produce a good estimate to lambda. Okay. So, bakit siya naging good estimate for lambda? So, let's look at this equation a little closer. Okay. Now, the numerator is x sub n minus x sub n minus 1. But remember, ang definition natin ng fixed point iteration ng x sub n I equal kay f of x sub n minus 1. So this x sub n here can be written as f of x sub n minus 1. Same thing is true for x sub n minus 1. It can be written as f of x n minus 2. All right? I retain ko lang yung denominator. Why? Because look at this. Function value, tapos my denominator. Function value, tapos my denominator. All right? So para siyang approximate ng derivative or ito yung slope ng secant line passing through x equals n minus 1 and x equals n minus 2. And since this is a slope, it's natural to think about derivatives. And when you talk about derivatives, there are plenty of name theorems for derivatives, pero foremost of which ay yung mean value theorem. Okay? 
the mean value theorem tells us that if f is differentiable on a close in, uh, on an open interval, then there exists a number c sub n on that open interval such that f prime of c sub n is equal to the slope of the secant line. So yun sinasabi sa atin ng mean value theorem. So di ba akala nyo noon ng mean value theorem ay isa lang theoretical exercise na pinapahanap sa inyo what is the number c that will satisfy or that uh, that is guaranteed by the conclusion of MVT. But MVT has many, many applications in applied math. Sila yung nag-justify karamihan ng mga error estimates na kailangan natin. And syempre, kailangan mo ng error estimates para ma-prove na yung method na pinopropose mo ay, um, ay maganda or is, uh, or is guaranteed to produce uh, nice results or, I mean, accurate results. Okay? So yon sabi ng mean value theorem, there is a number C sub n. And what is the only restriction on C sub n? C sub n is a number between X sub n minus 1 and X sub n minus 2. Okay? Tapos kukunin ko yung limit nito as n approaches infinity. So what happens when n grows indefinitely? Kasi nga, sequence yan. So gusto ko yung nasa dulo. Alright? So, pero kapag ka, Kapag ka si n ay nilakihan ko, all right? And then remember, you in assume natin from the beginning that the fixed point iteration will converge. So when n increases without bounds, x sub n minus 1 and x sub n minus 2 will be very, very close to each other, all right? And not just that, they will be very, very close to the value of r, the fixed point r, okay? So ibig sabihin, kapag ka malaki na sa n, Yung interval form, the open interval form by these two guys will contain the fixed point R. And also that interval will be very, very short. And since that interval is very, very short, we can say that C sub n is also very, very close to R. Kasi nga parehas silang nandun sa loob ng napakaliit na interval na yon. So in the long run, we can say that C sub n approaches R. And so the sequence of the lambda ends is convergent and it will converge actually to the asymptotic error lambda, which is F prime of R. Kasi nga, ito, uh, as n approaches infinity, yung F prime of C sub n ay mag approach ng F prime of R, pero si F prime of R actually ay equal sa lambda, sa asymptotic error constant. Okay? So and then this is a this is a nice thing because uh, even if we're working with the regular false method or uh, the fixed point iterations, parehas yung lambda and snake consider natin. Okay, but if you will try to use Eiken's method in other linearly convergent uh, algorithms, so limba nagagawa ka ng project, yeah, uh, you came across this uh, linearly convergent method for root finding. Uh, tapos uh, na isip nyo ah magandang project ni apply ko rito siguro si Eiken's. So just be careful, the lambda for that particular method might be different from the lambda that we use for regular falsi and uh, the fixed point iterations. Kasi nga, kailangan mong i-analyze, kailangan mong humanap ng estimate para dun sa asymptotic error constant. It just so happened here that our lambdas are dependent on the iteration number. Okay? So yun, so... And I think this is the only requirement that we need before we can see Aiken's method in action. All right. So um, finally, ito na yung implementation ng Aiken's method. Remember, we said kanina, uh, flash ko na ulit, etong equation na to, oops, this one, okay. R is approximately equal to this, which is an expression involving x sub n, lambda sub n, uh, lambda, x sub n, and x sub n minus 1. Sorry, doble ko nasabi yung x sub n. Pero, so, ibig sabihin, kaya ko palang gumawa ng panibagong sequence of approximates using xn, x sub n minus 1, and lambda n para makahanap ng isang mas magandang approximation para kay r. Okay? And that's what equation uh, 5.8 is giving us. Okay? So, ito yung formula para dun sa pagko-compute ng terms dun sa sequence y sub n, uh, which is basically the product of the application of Aiken's method to a linearly convergent sequence. Kasi kailangan meron ka na talagang sequence x sub n, 
mula dun sa mga exabends, makakakompute ka ng lambda ends, and then use those information together in order to get y sub n. And y sub n will converge faster than the linearly convergent sequence. How much faster uh, from a linear convergence it will get a super linear convergence? Hindi ko nasulat kanina ko lang na-realize na ganun nga pala yun. Remember, kapag ka sinabi nating linear, kunin mo yung limit ng r minus xn over r minus x sub n minus 1, as n approaches infinity, you'll get a non-zero constant, which is your asymptotic error constant. Right? Pero kung papalitan mo yung x sub n by y sub n, so you will apply Aitken's method. So the numerator now will be replaced by y sub n. Right? So pagka pinalitan mo yung nasa numerator, yung, yung nth iteration mo, instead of the usual result from your uh, linearly convergent sequence, pinalitan mo siya nung anong uh, result ng Aitken's algorithm o ng Aitken's uh, uh, extrapolation formula, instead of getting an asymptotic error constant that is greater than zero, you'll get exactly zero as your limit. Okay? So hindi na siya linearly convergent, nagiging super linear na yung kanyang convergence. Now, when we say super linear, mas mabilis siya sa linear, pero hindi ganun kalaki yung improvement. Kasi hindi siya naging quadratic, Hindi, na, hindi siya naging rate of convergence 1.1 or even 1.01 or even 1.00001. Kaunting-kaunti lang yung nadagdag niya, pero usually it's enough to save computation time and computational resources like computer memory, CPU usage, RAM usage, and so on. Kaya ito yung uh, isang madaling hack dun sa mga linearly convergent sequences ma-push ma natin yung convergence up to super linear. Pero nothing more. We cannot increase the rate of convergence other than yung pagiging super linear niya. Okay? Ah, oh, yeah. That's one thing na sinabi ko pala, iti-check ko in module number two, tama. Kapag ka yung limit ay equal kay zero, okay, tapos one yung numerator sa baba, hindi siya linearly convergent, super linear siya. Tama yung nasa module two. Kapag ka naman meron kang constant, pag less than 1, yan yung sinasabi natin na linear. Pero pag greater than 1, ang tawag natin doon ay sublinear yung convergence. Pero technically, subset lang ng, linearly con ng linear convergent series uh, sequences yung mga sublinear sequences. Alright? So yun, ganun niya pinapabilis. Now, there are two variations of how to apply Aitken's formula. So yung una, pwede kang gumawa ng panibagong sequence. So parang separate yung pagkocompute ng y sub n mula dun sa pagkocompute ng mga x sub n. So kaya tinawag ko siya, inimbento ko lang to, so wala akong makita ng tawag. Nag-iisip pa ako kaninang umaga, or hindi, kagabi ko pala ito natapos. Ano kaya yung tatawag ko dun sa dalawang variations? Pwedeng I can type 1, I can type 2, or whatnot. Pero essentially, I decided, tawagin ko itong Aitken S para mas mukhang high-tech. Tapos, uh, madali siyang tandaan kasi ibig sabihin S, separate. Separate yung pag-compute mo ng X sub N at saka Y sub N. Separate in what sense? Let's look at example 5.1. So in example 5.1, I redid yung isang example mula sa regular falsi method. Okay? So dun sa regular falsi method, meron tong isang example na ginawa natin, uh, na ginamit natin yung regular falsi, classical regular falsi, para mahanap yung solution nito on the interval 1, 2. Tapos gumamit tayo ng interval-based stopping criterion 10 to the negative 6. I, uh, I show you my uh, our, uh, MATLAB result para dito sa implementation na yan. Pero dito ginawa ko siya sa Excel kasi mas madaling i-implement yung Aitken dun sa, uh, sa Excel. All right? Para hindi ako nagsisave ng maraming previous values kay MATLAB magugulo yung programming ko or baka mahirapan ako dun sa programming. So, madaling solusyon ko kasi Excel pag ayaw mo mag, mag, uh, mag problema about what values to store. Okay? Now, in-implement ko siya. Ito yung X sub N. Same, uh, same results as what, uh, as what I got from MATLAB. All right? Tapos, kinumpute ko yung lambda sub N using the formula that we have uh, presented para dun sa lambda N pag regular falsi. Which is which incidentally ganun din naman para sa fixed point iteration. 
So, pinakita ko lang dito yung, so, eto, kung, kung i-double click mo to sa Excel, eto yung makikita mong formula na ginamit ko. Ang mali ko pala, hindi ko nilagay yung header. So, I think this is what? Uh, I think this is the column C. Ito yung column D. Tapos ito yung column B. Alright. So, ito yung formula. Pagko-compute ng lambda sa Ben. Okay. Tapos, with the knowledge of lambda sa Ben, I'm gonna use it in equation 5.8 na nagbibigay sa akin ng relation. Paano ko makompute si y sub n given x sub n, x sub n minus 1, and the value for lambda. Okay? But uh, there's a little caveat there. Hindi lang pala x sub n at saka x sub n minus 1 yung kailangan ko para makompute yung y sub n. Kailangan ko rin yung x sub n minus 2. Kasi kailangan ko yung x sub n minus 2 para makompute yung lambda n. So, si lambda n, itong tatlong previous values yung ginamit niya. So, even though on its face, yung y sub n, ang nasa kanya lang ay si x sub n minus 1 at saka si x sub n, alright? Kakailanganin ko pa rin yung x sub n minus 2 para doon sa i can. Alright? Okay, so, computing ko yung mga y sub n. Kaya makikita nyo sa y sub 3 na ako nag-start. Because it's impossible to get y sub 2. Because to get y sub 2, we will need what? We will need hanggang kay y sub 0. Pero remember, kay regular falsi, wala naman tayong y sub 0. Kasi initial interval yung meron tayo. So the least that I can compute is y sub 3 and so on. Tapos ito yung computation formula ko para dito sa y sub 3. Okay? So you can double check. This is my x sub n. This is my lambda sub n over here. 1 minus lambda sub n times x sub n minus x sub n minus 1. Okay. And this is what I got. All right. Now, I check this and look at the fifth, uh, actually the third entry. Okay. Yung pangatlong entry dun sa y sub n. Dun pa lang sa pangatlong entry sa y sub n, I was able to get how many? Two, four, six. Uh, nine decimal digits nung pang-anim na iteration ng regular falsi. So six iteration of regular falsi I na reduce mo into three iterations ng icons. Pero meron to natatagong, pero hindi fair yung comparison na yon. Kasi para ma compute mo yung third iteration ng icon, kailangan natin yung unang limang iterations para sa regular falsi. All right. So it is not a, it's not a uh, fair comparison, especially for sequences na konti lang yung improve. Uh, usually, makikita nyo to kapag ka napakalaki nung, napakaliit nung stopping criterion. If you require 10 to the minus 20 accuracy, then I think the uh, ICANN method will be a good bargain for the, for the added computational expense. Bakit may added computational expense? Kasi kukomputin mo yung lambda sub n, tapos you will extrapolate using x sub n and x sub n minus 1, but with lambda sub n para makompute yung y sub n. So, if you have a short run, kung okay naman yung linear convergence, sham na iteration lang, then you might you might uh, not be convinced that it is a good bargain to use Eitken's iteration. But if you if your run will take about, say, thousands of iterations, then using Eitken will be a good bargain for the additional computational expense. Okay? Now, ito yung Aiken S. May isa pa akong tinawag. Ito naman yung i can i, alright? Yung i can i, tinawag ko siyang i can i para sa integration or integrated. Sorry, I'm gonna need five more minutes. Try natin tapusin to. So, but if you have classes at one, you can leave by 12.50, alright? But I'll appreciate it if some can stay until 12.55 at least. So, para matapos natin to yung um, handout na to, alright? So, yung i can i routine naman, kaya i kasi integrated. Integrated within the x sub n, I integrated yung x sub n within the y sub n's. So, kaya nga pwedeng i-consider mo na lang siya as a single sequence. Alright? Hindi sila magkahiwalay na kukomputin ko muna yung x sub n. So, makikita ko na kung ilang iterations yung kailangan para ma-reach yung convergence using the regular falsi method or to using the, the original method. Tapos, pag nagawa ko na yun, saka ko gagawin yung i can. Yun yung ginawa natin sa a can s. Which doesn't make too much sense kasi nga, kinumpute mo na nga, nakakuha ka na ng magandang iterate using regular falsi. Tapos bakit ka pag gumawa ng Eitken's method? So dinoble mo lang yung trabaho. 
All right. So one way to to get away with those extra calculations needed, I e integrate na yung sequence yung mga bagong terms na magmumula kay Aiken dun sa original sequence. And this is particularly very handy when you're doing fixed point iteration. Okay. So meron kang fixed point iteration x sub n equals f of x sub n minus 1. Pwedeng i-run mo siya as usual. Pero kapag kakaya mo nang mag-iken using two previous results of the method itself, okay? Then saka ka lang mag-iken. Right? So remember, it's a fixed point iteration. Kailangan natin ng ilan nga ba yung kailangan? Kailangan natin ng dalawa, x sub n, x sub n minus 1. Pero sa pagko-compute ni lambda sub n, kailangan ko hanggang x sub n minus 2. Pero ang kagandaan sa fixed point iteration, meron siyang x sub 0. Alright? So, ibig sabihin, kung na kay x2 ako, kung na-compute ko na si x2, kaya ko nang compute yung lambda 2. Kasi yung lambda 2 ay magiging x2 minus x1 over x1 minus x sub 0. Hindi ko ito kayang gawin kanina sa regular falsi kasi wala tayong x sub 0. Pero kay fixed point iteration, kaya natin. So pag na-compute mo si x2, kaya mo nang compute yung lambda 2. Unlike sa regular falsi, kailangan mo nang... Uh, ang una natin makocompute ay si lambda 3. Okay? So yun yung, yung kagandahan ng i can s para sa fixed point iteration. So, paano ko siya implement? Kunin ko si x1, dahil wala pa akong information para makompute, uh, para mag i can So... Iproproceed ko lang, usual fixed point iteration para kay x2. Now, I have two values, x1, x2, at saka si x sub 0. Alright, so kaya ko ng competency lambda 2. And then, I can use formula 5.8 na. Kasi I also have x sub 1 and x sub 2, the two previous iterates. So to get x3, I can use, instead of the usual fixed point iteration, I can use Aiken's formula na. So, yun yung nasa equation 5.9. Okay? So, makakuha ko ng x3 not using the fixed point iteration pero gamit yung I can extrapolation. So, meaning, I extrapolated x1 and x2 to get x3 regardless of what the function f is. Okay? Tapos, yung x3 na to, siya yung gagamitin ko to get x4. Okay? Now, I will not extrapolate kay x4 kasi hindi siya fair. Kasi ang sinasabi lang ng Aitkens, lagi mong gagamitin ay mga x sub n's na nanggaling sa original iteration. Pero si x3, hindi siya nanggaling sa fixed point iteration. Nanggaling siya sa Aitkens. So, hindi ko to pwedeng gamitin as an extrapolatory material para compute si x4. So, ibig sabihin, in x4, I don't have enough information coming from the fixed point iteration so I cannot do Aitkens so I'm going to proceed with the usual fixed point iteration. So si x4 gagawin kong f of x3. Tapos pag compute kay x5, meron pa lang ako ay x4 coming from the fixed point iteration. I cannot use x3 as an extrapolatory material. Kasi hindi siya galing sa fixed point iteration. Yung derivation ng 8 cans, kailangan niya dapat nanggagaling dun sa mga x sub n's. Ito technically hindi siya x sub n kasi hindi siya nanggaling sa fixed point iteration. Pwede mo itong tingnan as your y sub 3 or y sub 1, uh, whatever. Okay, so, uh, sorry, uh, hold on. Hey, Miss. <laughs> na, uh, na experience nyo na itong malamang. Yung nahatching ka pero hindi siya tumuloy. One of the most unsettling feelings of all. Alright, so basically yun. Uh, Tapos, nasa na nga ba ako? So, kay X5, kailangan kong gamitin yung fixed point iteration as usual. Pero pagdating kay X6, kaya ko nang gamitin, kaya ko na mag-extrapolate kasi si X5 at saka si X4 nang galing sa fixed point iteration. So, I can use that, those two information along with lambda sub 5 to apply Aitken's formula. So, parang every multiple of 3, pwede kang mag- 8 can. All right. So, uh, mabilis ang example. Unless you have questions, uh, interrupt me if you have some questions about the method. Tawagin natin siyang I can I kasi siya yung integrated. Okay. So, tingnan natin to. 
pwede ba 2 minutes pa? Hirit lang ako ng content para matapos natin. Ang odd kasi kapag uh, mag-start pa ako dito on Thursday, ah, uh, on Friday. Okay. So, kunwari, bigyan ko kayo ng fixed point iteration na to. Tapos sa problem, sinabi niya naman siya ay convergent fixed point iteration. So, you don't need to prove it. So, pag sinabi ko na consider the convergent fixed point iteration, so no need to prove that it is convergent fixed point iteration. So, just believe me. Unless may typo ako, uh, sabihan niyo ako. Pero otherwise, hindi na kailangan ng proof. Okay. Tapos, initial condition daw ay 2.5. Stopping criterion ay 10 to the negative 16 na jump-based. Tapos, ginawa ko to kay Excel. I got this. I got, uh, or I needed 16 iterations so that the relative jump will be less than 10 to the minus 16. And apparently, it zeroed out on the 16th iteration. Tapos, tinali ko na rin yung lambda sa bed. Okay? Para, para magamit mamaya sa ICANN extrapolation. All right? So, nothing fancy here. Simpling fixed point iteration. Okay? Now, pag ginawa ko na yung ICANN I iteration, Pag ginawa ko yung I can I routine, makita nyo dito labing isang iterations na lamang yung kinailangan ko. Alright? Which technically is an, uh, which will be a good comparison para dun sa usual fixed point iteration na labing anim. So sure ako dito nabawasan ng lima kasi hindi ako nag-create ng additional sequence. Alright? Yun nga lang. So starting condition, usual fixed point iteration here, usual fixed point iteration here, because I am on the third iteration now, that's divisible by three. That means I already have two results that came in from um, hindi kasama yung una. Three results that came in from the fixed point iteration, so I can extrapolate those two values, right? So ito yung formula para dun sa extrapolation. And note that for this, I needed etong lambda sub two, okay? Because basically, it's uh, x sub three is x sub two plus lambda sub 2 over 1 minus lambda sub 2 times x2 minus x1. Tapos ito yung sa Excel niya. Okay? Tapos x4, wala akong information galing sa fixed point iteration. So, gamitin ko yung fixed point iteration kay x4. Gamitin ko rin siya para kay x5. And then on the sixth iteration, I have two previous results from fixed point iteration. So, I can do a can extrapolation. Okay? So yung mga naka-highlight dyan na blue, sila yung ginamitan ko ng extrapolation. And look at this, nagre si Excel, kaya may green na dun sa border. Ibig sabihin, inconsistent daw yung formula from the row before. And that's understandable kasi ito, fixed point iteration, ito, I can in extrapolation. And gusto ko sana ipakita na yung lambda sub n talaga ay magko-converge kay zero pag dun sa bagong sequence. But unfortunately, Nag-kick in kagad yung cancellation error, all right? Subtraction of two numbers, uh, leading the machine to think that it is equal to zero. That gave me an erratic behavior for lambda sub n. So unfortunately, hindi ko napakita or hindi ko na-verify empirically na yung lambda sub n mag-approach ng zero. Pero dun sa usual fixed point iteration, before cancellation error kicked in, I look at these values and it seems that they will converge to 0 0.105 which is basically close to the asymptotic error constant. Ang asymptotic error constant dito ay f prime ng, ano nga ba? f prime yata ng square root of 5 or something like that. Uh, but double check me on that. So dapat siya ay 0 0.105. So 1 .0, uh, 1, 0 0.1056 yata yung asymptotic error constant, dot, dot, dot. Okay, pero you see that the lambda sub -ends provide me a good estimate for the asymptotic error constant. Tapos, uh, ang promise ni Aitken, yung lambda sub ends dun sa bagong sequence will approach zero. But again, uh, cancellation error kick in so early that I cannot trust the results here in my table for lambda sub n. Okay? So basically, that's the Aitken I routine. So meron tayong dalawang routines from Aitken, yung separated at saka yung integrated. So it depends uh, from problem to problem which one you're going to use, all right? But for fixed point iterations, I think it's more convenient to use the uh, to use the uh, I can I iteration. Tapos, ewan ko lang sa regular falsi kung masyadong mahirap yung I can I. But I think I ask you to try I can I 
Sino ka ba? Ay hindi, hindi ko pala sa inyo pinagawa. Ay na yun, pinagawa ko pala. Try nyo yung I can I para dun sa regular falsi method. Okay? So I think I am overstaying my welcome sa extension. So do you guys have any questions or final thoughts about Aiken's process? Or by the way, if you are looking at other books, uh, minsan yung tawag nila dito ay Aiken's uh, delta squared process. Yung delta squared, it has something to do with finite differences, which I skipped talking about. So hindi ko na siya sinama dun sa literature natin. Okay. And then there's another acceleration method, Stephenson's method, uh, which will work for quadratically convergent sequences. Pero hindi ko na rin siya i-discuss para umikse yung unit number one, umikse yung exer sa uh, Holy Monday, at umikse yung problem set. So what you can do is to to uh, to take note of Stephenson and maybe you would like to put, uh, to use uh, or to do an exploratory or expository problem on Stephenson's method. Acceleration method din siya, which is a special case yata ng Aikens. All right. So other concerns, questions? So if there are none, so thank you for your patience and for indulging me at 11 minutes. All right. So um, yeah, prepare for the problem set. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And then let's see each other again on Friday. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, Professor.